everyone, and welcome to another episode of More Sewing with Michelle. On today's episode, I'm featuring that really cool, mythical, magical dragon quilt in back of me. These dragons are made by the whole country caboodle. Can't wait to tell you about all I have in store for you today and these adorably cute dragons. Let's get going on today's More Sewing with Michelle. So what I first want to talk about is the company that made these wonderful dragon prefused die-cutted um, kits that you can purchase with us today. The company is called the Whole Country Caboodle. And I fell in love with their designs um, many, many years ago. I don't know if it was first from going to quilt shows or from magazines or looking at things on Pinterest, which I often do. I tell you it's the best way to get inspired to do a new project or try something new. But one of those things had brought my attention to their wonderful designs. And I fell in love with them and created with them over the years. But what I wanted to bring in today was these stinking cute dragons. Now, dragons um, have a footprint right now in pop culture, um, as well as they're always um, one of those things going back to knights and ladies and dragons and swords and, you know, the whole English knight thing. Um, dragons are always super popular and they seem to always keep popping up in our society. So um, they have lots of mythical footprints and multiple cultures, and I thought it was a perfect thing to bring in. So I brought in four of the patterns from the whole country caboodle, and um, the designer, Leanne Anderson, oh, she is um, the owner, by the way, of the company that she started in 1992. It's located in Nashua, Iowa, and um, it is completely family-owned and operated. And get this by multiple generations of women working side by side together to create these wonderful um, designs and elements that they have for the company, the whole country caboodle. So like I said, um, their use of designs and their whimsical animals, absolutely, um, I'm drawn to. I just love the look. So I brought in the four different dragons. We have Fire Dragon, which has, you know, fire coming out of his mouth. Um, we have some Moore's Dragon. He might be my favorite because of all my years in Girl Scouting and camping. I love to make some Moore's, and I think it's really cool to have a dragon do the heating part for you. We have Curious Dragon, which is a little bit curious about that dragonfly that he's next to. And then we also have Butterfly Dragon. How cute is that? Having a little butterfly on the tip of his nose. So we have four patterns that I brought in. And as I stated before, these kits or patterns come with pre-fused, pre-die-cutted pieces together in sheets. And then what you're going to do is um, take those pieces and kind of put a puzzle together and put them, um, lay them out by the diagram that you get here in the order that they need to be. And then you will simply fuse them down and go forward. So right now I want to bring up a picture here on this side of me that shows you basically all the pieces on my quilt sandwich that I made. So you can see there's just a random amount of pieces that I have cut out of um, the prefuse sheets. And then on this side, you can see that I've taken them now and I have put them in the right order and I'm ready to go. So that's the idea. You can go from this side to that side super quick and have all of the frustration of cutting things out. You don't have to worry about prefusing the fabric. You don't have to worry about picking the fabric. They've taken all those difficult and um, time consuming things out of the picture and made it so that you can get going right away with your design. So let me show you another um, video. Um, what I did because um, I wanted to have the quilt done in back of me is I'm doing things a little bit differently today on More Sewing with Michelle. I did all of the sewing for the quilt and back of me before, but I did little videos along the way. So you're going to hear little bits and pieces from before, and then I'll talk about those things. So I want to first get going on this first video. 
Okay, so I am prepping the fabric. I'm doing quilt as you go for these adorable dragons, the whole country caboodle. So you can see we've got the four different ones that I have, and I've gone ahead and I prepped four different squares. So I have a center, I've added some sashing and then a border. I've got the backing on there and I have the batting. So I'm doing a little quilt sandwich. I'm gonna do a little quilting to stabilize everything and then I'll show you my next piece. So now you can see how I prepped the fabrics and keep in mind, I did quilt as you go. Um, it's a different technique as far as putting quilts together. Um, you can do traditional or you can do quilt as you go. And if you're not familiar with quilt as you, as you go, let me just give you a little brief description or my description as far as what it means. If I was to do a lot of, if this was just one big piece of fabric and I added those dragons, then I would have that big area, all of this quilt to kind of get into the neck of my machine to do all the detailed stitching, the applique stitching and all the details around the borders and also on the actual dragons. So that can be a little bit difficult depending upon your machine um, and also depending upon the size of the quilt. Now this isn't a completely huge quilt. It's a, you know, like a throws type size. But even so, I chose to do quilt as you go because I can do really detailed stitching around all of the items and I don't have to deal with the big bulk. So when you do quilt as you go, you have your top layers of fabrics, you have your batting, you have your backing. Um, I fused all the dragons down, did all my stitching, and then I take those segments, in this case it would be this one here, as well as the four other ones, and I piece them together with the quilt as you go process. So um, maybe I'll do a video on that down the road, but it's one of the ways that I like to do really detailed, um, a lot of free motion, and also line stitching, and also applique. It makes it easier for you um, if you're working on your domestic machine. So I love it and I use it often. But on this next video, I'm gonna show you the next steps on getting this quilt put together. Okay, so I wanted to show you how the kits come for the whole Country Caboodles, some Moore's Dragon. I have this one ready to go. So let me go ahead and open it up. You see that you have the paperwork, all the instruction it also has a diagram but as you know when you buy this it is pre-fused and you get all these pieces already pre-fused and die cutted and I tell you I love that they're die cutted because all you have to do is snip those little pieces apart as you see on here and then you simply piece them together so we've got all these different colors we've got the two buttons that are included for the eyes, which I love. Um, all the different elements that's going to make this dragon work. So on this one, I have not cut them apart yet, but you can see they simply have little tabs that are holding everything still together. Simply trim those up and you're good to go. And we've got all these pieces, as you can see. So that's how the kits come. Now I wanna show you real quick I've gone ahead and um, I had a picture that I can show right now that had how I pieced together um, the little block. And I oftentimes will do things a little bit different. So you can see this is just the center piece here. And then I went ahead and added some sashing and then I added the border. And the border is the same on the picture. So basically all that I did was add a little sashing around the picture there. And then I went ahead, since I'm doing it as quilt as you go, I've added some simple little flourishes on the bottom that I did free motion on, on the bottom and the top. And then I added some straight line quilting. So let me hold it up for you there. I also did stitch around the ditch, around the center block and also that sashing. So you can see if I hold it up close, all that work that I did with free motion, and you can also see that I traced it, um, and you can see a little bit of my chalk writer there. So that's what I did on that. Now let me show you, I basically have gotten 
three of the other ones all fused. So the next one here that you'll see, this is Curious Dragon. It's got a little um, dragonfly in there as well. And on here, you can see I have everything fused down. Isn't he stinking cute? So I'll show you a little bit of him. There's little dragonfly. So that's Curious Dragon. And then we have Butterfly Dragon. And Butterfly Dragon, I went ahead and used some of the extra red, extended his neck. Um, just because I wanted a little bit more space on the top part because I made it bigger. So you can see I just pieced together some of that red to make his neck a little longer. And um, the butterfly and his wonderful dragon wings. So that's there. And then the last one that I have prefused is Fire Dragon. Now he is stinking cute. I think, you know, any little boy or girl would just love these on a quilt or a wall hanging. So with Fire Dragon, he's up and close here. You can see all the fire, his wings, all his little horns down his spine and his little, um, you know, claws on his wings where he could really do some damage. But anyways, isn't he cute? So those are the four dragons that I'm working with. Now, this is just the first part. I will be doing um, the free motion completely around the dragons, and I'll have another little chat about that a little bit later. But I wanted you to show you, before I got too far and too, too involved, where I was to get started on these wonderful, the whole country caboodles, dragons. And we got four of them here. Anyways, we'll get on to the next thing. So... I know that you have already fallen in love with these four wonderful, whimsical dragons that are pre-fused, pre-die-cutted from the whole country caboodle. And you know what to do by now. You're going to go to moors-so.com or you can simply click on the link in the described box where you saw the video and that'll take you to our landing page where you can get curious dragon you can get some more's dragon you can get fire dragon or butterfly dragon we'll also have on the website that wonderful alicio iron that um, i show in the video and also a chalk pencil so we'll have those items available for you and don't forget moors-so.com so you know how these wonderful kits come, and these are all my leftover pieces. Um, you never know when you're going to need something that's prefused, just a little bit of a fabric. But let me show you some of my tricks and how I go about pinning it down before I do the fusing with my iron. Okay, so here is the next thing. I wanted to show you real quickly before I fused everything down. This is S'mores Dragon. You can see I've got the paperwork here. I have cut out all those individual pieces with my scissors, and then I have simply placed them on. I've got my iron ready to go. Um, and you can see what I do is I lined everything up on the edges. I've taken off the paper backing, and I simply pin it. And the reason that I do it this way is because I wanna make sure everything is where I want it to be. So you can see on the side here, we got pins all over the place. But that way it allows me to make any adjustments or alter the positioning of any particular item before it's fused. If I was to start to fuse, say, this section here, and say I forgot to put the wings on, um, it would have been, you know, it's doable, but it would have been a little bit less of a hassle to do it this way. Because on this one, you can see... I've got part of the wing on top and the other part I have tucked underneath. So this is the way I do it. The only pieces I don't have pinned on now are these little claws that go on his fingers here for where he is holding his adorable some mores. So once again, from the pieces, I cut them out, used my pins, pinned everything down. My next step is simply to 
take that wonderful iron I have, remove pins, and press them down. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and do my free motion stitching all the way around. So, moving right along. So I want to show you just how easy it is for me to mark up my free motion lines, or also if you're just doing stitching, to do some of the detailed work. And I think I'm working on this one here, Curious Dragon, now. So you can see in the video where I've taken just one of my chalk pencils and I've marked it up so that I know where I'm going to stitch. And it just makes things easier. So roll that video. Okay, so I've got all my dragons now fused down and I've taken my pencil here and I've marked up my free motion lines. So this is basically how I do things. Um, when I'm going to do free motion, you can see his eyes, the center eyes. He's got some little florals on his ears, the dragonfly. And that way it makes it easier to follow um, the pattern for free motion. So I'm going to do around the edges. I'm going to do his edges to secure everything. Because keep in mind, it has adhesive. But I want to make sure that nothing comes up. So I've got the details for the inside and the accents of the dragon as well as the others ready to go. And the next step is free motion. So there you have it. Those are the individual steps that I took to create this amazing, whimsical, and wonderful quilt that we have featuring the whole country caboodles, pre-fused, pre-cut dragons. And we have, I'm going to show you a close-up real quick. We have Fire Dragon. And you can see him on right here. And then we also have Curious Dragon. We also have Butterfly Dragon. Notice the details um, on these pictures as they pop up. And the last one, like I said, is probably my favorite, S'mores Dragon. Now, all four of these dragons you can use individually or you can use as I did to create a complete quilt. It's completely up to you. I also wanted to share a little tidbit. So in each of the diagrams you have a placement line for all of the pieces. But keep in mind you can use those placement lines and um, make your own with your own fusing um, elements, either steam to seam or wonder under or one of those, trace and you can make this dragon again and again by simply using it as a diagram to make your own prefused applique shapes. And one of the things that um, I think would be cool is we have primary colors here, but what if you have a little girl and you wanted to use pinks and purples and make some magical, mystical, um, light pastel color dragons? It's all completely up to you, and once you have the pattern, you can use it whichever way you want. So I wanted to share that as well. And then I also wanted to talk about putting it together. I already spoke a little bit about the quilt as you go process. So we know that each one of these four squares, I did as quilt as you go. And then I made some strips and I also made some squares. And um, when I flip the quilt as you go process over, it attaches everything together. But you may have noticed one other feature on this quilt that I love to do every once in a while. It's an alternative way of doing a binding. And typically, you know, binding is when you're encasing all of the end pieces. Well, this really isn't a binding. Like I said, it's an alternative way that I came up with a few years ago. Um, I know that I have shared with you that I loved rough edge. I love that raggeded look of fabrics when they start to fray that gives them like a chenille type feel to it. Well, that's what I did when I created this different type of binding. So you can see on the back of my quilt here, got my quilt label, can't forget your quilt labels, but you can see I have blue fabric all the same, but I have the same on the back that matches the borders here. And I have two pieces of fabrics there. And then I have four pieces that match the borders. So on this binding area, I have six different pieces of fabric. I basically took my scissors, cut them individually so they get that raggedy quilted look. Um, eventually it will get soft and fuzzy and frizzly and I love it. I do it every once in a while on my quilts and it depends upon the quilt. If it's more of a traditional quilt or if it's going to my husband or my kids or 
a male family member, I wouldn't do this type of barter, but I love to do it for a little bit of fun and whimsy and to create a different look on my quilts every so often. So I basically add folded strips. I sew, I encase basically the ends of the, the quilt are completely sewn and I have multiple layers there cut different ways and different lengths. So that way, as it ages, you're gonna get those two colors shown on both sides. Hopefully you can kind of see um, by looking at the corners there how it is. But it's just a different way that I like to make and finish my quilts up when I'm done. So that about covers it for this week's of More Sewing with Michelle. Don't forget to use your coupon codes when you purchase any of the four dragons from the whole country caboodle, um, as well as the iron and the pencils. So all of those we have on our website where you can purchase them. And don't forget, we have five stores here in Southern California. We have Mission Viejo, Temecula, Huntington Beach, Brea, and Corona, all ready to serve you at any time. I hope you have a fabulous week. Happy stitching. And I can't wait to hear what you've done with your dragons from the whole country caboodle. Until then, bye bye